Hello everybody, my name is Anderson Santos and I'm the founder of Cashier Bird. This is the part 3 of a 5 series videos we are making to show you all about vegan cheese making. Today we are going to talk about equipments. But before we go into details, I want to say that the 3 equipments that are must have in order to make vegan cheese is a blender, a thermometer for your fridge and a refrigerator. Everything else that I mention now is going to be optional, good to have, but you can be creative and use whatever you have in order to achieve the same result. So before we go into the equipments you need in order to make vegan cheese, let's think about the steps you need to do before you get it. So the first one is to milk your ingredients. Second one is to form or curdle your cheese. And third is to age your cheese. So let's talk about milking your ingredients. If you're using cashews, for example, you don't need to filter anything. You just make a paste and this paste will be shaped. So that means you just need a blender, um, add water and cashews and create this paste. But the better the blender, the finer the texture will be and the better the cheese quality. So if you don't have a really good blender, that only means that your cheese will be a bit greedier, the texture might be a bit drier, but it's gonna be a decent cheese. On the other hand, if you're using soy or almond, you need to milk your ingredients. That means any blender will do it, because in the end you're gonna use a cloth to filter out the fibers and um, the milk. Depending on what cloth you're using, it will have a different structure. If it's a very fine structure, that means all the fibers are being kept. If it's a bit more open structure, that means more of the fibers will go through into the milk. And when you curdle, it might be um, affected by this amount of fibers. So you won't be a nice curd, but it gives a bit more body to the milk. So when you make a cheese, it gets a little bit of the fibers that in is not always a bad thing. So you can try with different cloth just to get um, the milk the way you want. What we have at cashewber.com, we have a nut milk bag made out of, from, of linen from an Austrian company. Um, and it's open enough just to get a little bit of the fibers out. Uh, but most of the fibers stay there. It's very easy to milk, but you can use any cloth to get the milk out. So after you have the milk or the paste, you need to ferment it and shape it. The first two hours of the cheese making, it's very important because that's when the cultures are starting to grow into the cheese. And that means if you want to make it a better fermentation, you could use electric cooker or a yogurt machine for the first one or two hours of the cheese making after you add the cultures you could keep it warm between 35 to 40 degrees and you result in a better uh, cheese so after you add the enzymes the cheese will start to curdle that means you need to shape it somehow for a camembert you don't need a camembert form you could even use a bowl or something because there are not there's not a lot of moisture or water that will come out. But if you're making a curdled milk cheese, like almonds, for example, that means you need a cheese form in order to get the whey out and keep only the curd. And if you want to press your cheese, um, there are some forms with the press lid that you can use and help to remove the moisture and keep a more compact curd. Another thing that you might consider is having a cheese mat which will help the cheese to dry or the mold to grow both underneath and on top. Um, so this is something that I find it always handy to have. And if you're making a paste or your curds are too fine that will go through the holes of the cheese form, you might want to use a cheesecloth and that will hold the shape, release the moisture without losing any of the curd. And finally, after you milked your ingredients and shaped it, it's time for it to be aged. To age a cheese, you need to consider two variables, temperature and relative humidity. 
For temperature, most cheeses need between 7 and 14 degrees. That we will achieve in a normal refrigerator, but better if you have a wine fridge. Then you have higher temperatures, that means quicker fermentation. And for the relative humidity, you might want to get a container with the lid a little bit open so the air will flow and your cheese will age, the mold will grow inside it, or you can use also a wrapper that will protect the cheese and allow the oxygen exchange, but you need to check every other day and dry it off if there's too much moisture. And finally, after your cheese is ready, you want to wrap it in a camembert paper, baking paper or aluminum foil, something to protect the cheese. And after your cheese is ready, the mold has grown if it's a mold-based cheese, then you need to stop the, pro the fermentation process and for that you wrap in a camembert paper or a baking paper and then you keep at a colder temperature. And if you have questions about cheese making, we do have a Facebook group. So go to facebook.com slash group slash and join us. Thank you for watching.